as a prelude to semi-definite programming, let's first take a look at the Schur's complement. So let us say that there is a vector, a matrix X, which has the form. So this is a block matrix X, A, B, B transpose C. So you can think of it as something like this. So B and B transpose would be rectangular and A and C are square matrices. And we assume that, so let's assume that A is equal to A transpose. So A and C are both symmetric and this implies, note that this implies that X is also symmetric. So X is a real symmetric matrix. In other words, we can say that X is in N S N cross N. So N cross N symmetric matrix. The Schur's complement of X is given by, so there are two uh, formulations. S1 is equal to C minus B transpose A inverse B. Uh, provided of course that A is uh, invertible so as long as A is invertible this is the Schur's complement another one is the A minus B C inverse B transpose and again this requires that C should be invertible so depending on whether A and C are invertible uh, neither or both or one of these could be defined and the key result that we that uh, is very useful in this context so the key result is that x is psd x is positive semi definite this fact is equivalent to saying that s1 is positive semi definite and a is positive semi definite which is equivalent to saying that S2 is positive semi-definite and C is positive semi-definite. So as long as all the things are well defined, these three statements are exactly equivalent. In other words, starting from or given the positive semi-definiteness property of X, you can infer the positive semi-definiteness property of S1 and A and vice versa. And there is another result which says that the determinant of x is equal to the determinant of a times the determinant of s1 which is equal to the determinant of c times the determinant of s2 so this is the second result so these two results are very important and will play a big role in working with semi-definite programs but before that let us take an example an example application of this Schur's complement. So let's say that there is a matrix D which is of this form. So D is T, T is a scalar times identity and then a vector X, its transpose and T. Right. So this is one vector. So you can imagine that identity is this, this is T times identity and then X is this vector this line is this vector and this is x transpose and t is simply this scalar right so this is a special case of block decomposition of d where we have taken all but one of the rows and columns into the first matrix and that is simply a scalar multiple of identity right so in other words if we apply the Schur's complement result we would require that a is t times identity b is x and c is t right so how, what is the Schur's complement assume that t is greater than 0 so what is the Schur's complement we can see that s1 is equal to t minus x transpose t inverse x which is basically t minus x transpose x by t okay and then the result says that d positive semi-definite is equivalent to saying that x transpose x is less than equal to s1 being positive semi-definite is the same as saying that x transpose x is less than equal to t square and t is greater than equal to 0 so t is greater than 0 is already given which is 
equivalent note that this can be equivalently written as norm of x less than equal to t and t greater than equal to 0 which is the implicit constraint so this is of what form this is the second order cone form so we have expressed this constraint which was on the positive semi-definiteness of this matrix d as a soc constraint right so this is an example application of the shirts complement through the use of the Schurz complement, we have been able to express this constraint, which is basically a complicated constraint, right? It is saying that a given matrix is positive semi-definite in terms of X and T. It is a complicated constraint because the only way to realize what this constraint is, is to find out the eigenvalues of D and make sure that they are positive. Now, eigenvalues of D as functions of X and T would be complicated functions. But fortunately, it turns out that this constraint is exactly equivalent to this constraint that norm of x is less than equal to t which is a simple soc constraint and we know how to handle socps so that's all about schurz complement and as i said earlier it will play a big role in manipulating allowing us to manipulate semi definite programs